Hey Zebs! In this video, I'm going to try to explain to you why I am very happy to vote for Hillary Clinton in this election. After spending a lot of time looking at both party platforms, I am really pretty strongly inclined to agree with the Democratic platform above the Republican platform. First of all, I do in fact believe it is the government's job to try and make the world better for all of us. That means that they should be doing things like trying to improve, uh, trying to defeat poverty and hunger and trying to make sure that everyone can get the health care that they need um, and protecting everyone's rights. I believe that that is in fact the government's job. Secondly, with regard to how we treat other nations, I feel that we should be treating the other nations the way I, same way I believe that we should be treating each other with respect and cooperation to try and mutually meet our goals and to make the world as a whole a better place. The Republicans' attitude seems to be very, very self-centered and all about do exactly what's best for America and to heck with the rest of the world, and I feel that that's actually counterproductive for America and counterproductive for the world as a whole. And finally, on the subject of freedom of religion, which is one of the big differences between the two parties, I identify strongly with the democratic standpoint on what that means. Um, I'm not going to go into it in this video. It's too big of a topic. In fact, I'm probably going to break it up into two videos later. Even if I believed in the Republican Party platform, I couldn't, I could not bring myself to trust Donald Trump to execute it. Uh, when I listen to him speak, he very rarely puts any checkable facts in his speech. It's all name-calling and baseless accusation. He, he's really big about insinuating and or directly saying awful things, but he never backs them up for, with facts, except the few times when he does, and the facts turn out to be lies. PolitiFact, a website that does fact-checking for all the candidates, has found him by far to be the most dishonest of all of them. Instead of facts, his speeches are filled with assertions that everything is terrible, Everything is horrible. We're surrounded by enemies. Everyone who's different from you is an enemy. And all of our leaders are stupid and corrupt. And only Trump can save us. Honestly, his picture should just be the dictionary entry for demagogue. I hope you watched the excellent video that Hank Green posted this past week, link in the doobly-doo, about how um, this kind of speech is incredibly dangerous and how it grows from an a mistake, a misunderstanding that compassion is equated with weakness. So to sum up, Donald Trump is a dangerous demagogue, uh, a man that I would be really terrified to have as my president, and there's no way I could ever possibly vote for him. But now I think that that's settled, we can get to what I really want to, this video to be about, which is Hillary Clinton and why I will vote for her. As it became clear that um, it, this election was going to come down to Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, I often asked myself, or really whined, why? Why? Why Hillary Clinton? Why, when it is so important that this incredibly dangerous man not become president of our country, does he have to be pitted against one of the most despised and distrusted politicians of the past three decades? Why? Does he have to be put it against the woman that I have spent 20 years avoiding talking about because I am sick of hearing people tell me how evil she is? I know I'm not alone in this. I've heard lots of other people express the same thing, either personally or in news articles. And I decided it was well past time for me to really find out what Hillary Clinton is all about. First of all, I listened to what she had to say. Her speeches and her website focus on facts descriptions of real problems and how she plans to solve them. As far as I can tell, the only plan that Donald Trump has is a tax cut plan. Uh, and I hope that you'll watch the really good video that John Green posted this week, link in the doobly-doo, that compares his plan to Hillary Clinton's plan and what effects it would have on our country long term. But again, back to Hillary Clinton. It's hard to stay focused on her because he is so distractingly terrifying. When I took a look at her plans and her goals, I found myself mostly agreeing with them. Not completely, but mostly. I felt pretty enthusiastic about what she had to say. So the next question is, how could I possibly trust her to do it? I mean, this is Hillary Clinton, right? She's, I've heard all, it seems like all of my adult life, 
that she is untrustworthy and evil. And I recently heard a talk show host assert in apparent complete seriousness that she was demon-possessed. Even if I like what she says, how can I trust her to mean it and to try and act on it? So I started looking into the various bad things that I've heard about her over the years. But the more I looked, the more insubstantial they seemed. I began to think that I needed to just mainly make this video about debunking all of the bad things that have been said about her over the years. Fortunately, Leah Grover has already written an excellent uh, article on this, and I put a link down in the doobly-doo. You should totally read it. I've often wondered why she continued to work in the public eye after the public humiliation she got uh, as First Lady due to her husband's infidelities. Um, what exactly has she been doing all of that time? I realized I just didn't even know outside of the scandals. So, I, uh, fortunately that stuff is pretty much public information and I was able to look a lot of it up. And as I read about the things she's accomplished and the things she's tried to accomplish, I began to, an image began to emerge of a woman who was, in fact, a woman possessed. A woman possessed of an incredible purpose to make our country a better place for all of our citizens, to make the world a better place for all of the people in it. And a woman with the courage to keep trying to do these things, despite the anger and the hatred that's thrown at her by so many of the very people that she's working to help. This week, I fortunately came across an article written by a Tomika Tilleman, I hope I'm saying that correctly, who was previously, a, um, for four years, a speechwriter for Hillary Clinton. Um, and she got to know Hillary Clinton and what she was really like, and this, this article describes her, and this is what she had to say, in short. The Hillary Clinton I worked with bears no resemblance to the caricature I had heard described on talk radio. She is a woman of sincere faith. After I joined her staff, one of her confidants took me aside. If you're ever unsure how she would approach an issue, remember that Hillary Clinton is, at her core, a Midwestern Methodist. In virtually every speech, she had us reiterate that her goal is to help build a world in which every boy and girl has the opportunity to realize their God-given potential. Once, when rushing to deliver a draft, I left out the phrase God-given. She pointedly wrote the words back in. And that is why Hillary Clinton will be our first woman president. She has spent most of her adult life working for our country, working for us, because she is passionate about helping all of us to reach our God-given potential. No one is more qualified for the job than she is, and I will be proud to vote for her, and I hope you will too. Until next time, stay shiny.